Hi, my name is Tasha Lima and I'm the TRIO Student Support Services Advisor at Eastern Maine Community College. In this presentation, I will be providing an overview of Tier 1 of the EMCC Student Leadership Initiative. So, what exactly is the EMCC Student Leadership Initiative? At its most basic, it's an online badging and micro-credentialing opportunity for EMCC students housed in Brightspace. But really, it's a three-tiered, comprehensive leadership training that covers a wide variety of topics, which I'll be going over momentarily. And I just wanted to take a moment to explain where this initiative came from. I run a TRIO peer mentoring program here at EMCC, and after we were displaced due to COVID, I faced the challenge of how to bring what is normally an eight-hour in-person training to the virtual realm. I'm a big stickler about training and evaluation, and my peer mentors know that we train every semester and we take it very seriously. So, thus emerged the problem that needed a solution. I had been dabbling in Brightspace while helping build our online NSO and revise our FYE college success course, so I thought it would be a great place to build out our training. I believe I mentioned the project maybe in a student success meeting, and we got on the topic of training work-study students and formalizing some of the soft skill development that is so critical for our students to possess to be marketable in the workforce. Student leadership is also one of my personal professional focal areas, so it all just fell into place. I organized a group of about 10 folks across campus and we got to work. It has been a wonderfully collaborative process, so I just wanted to really honor and acknowledge the team of professionals who came together to build this learning opportunity. Before we get into the details of the tiers and submodules, who exactly is our intended audience? As you'll see, we've built Tier 1 to be introductory and open and accessible to all students, but particularly those who may demonstrate a desire to gain leadership training or a need to develop some of the skills and competencies that we cover. Throughout the development of Tier 1, we were also focusing on how this could be an excellent training and onboarding opportunity for current student leaders, such as those who work in work-study positions or in student clubs and organizations. As you'll see in the progression of the tiers, in tier two, we actually branch off into cohorts, and then in tier three, it requires students to work in a group. So being associated with a cohort is important for tier two, but essential for tier three. Anyway, I digress a bit. Let's get into the details of the tier one training. As I've stated, tier one is meant for a wide audience and is accessible to all students. As such, the learning outcomes are somewhat broad and introductory and include the following. Develop, students will develop an introductory understanding of the leadership submodules and topics included in the tier one training. Identify, students will be able to identify key terms and concepts related to each submodule. And articulate, students will articulate how each submodule topic is relevant to their own life or experience through prompted reflection. Just a comment about the articulate aspect. We decided that reflection and contextualization were the best exercises to assess students in their competencies for each submodule. We don't expect expertise on subject matter, but we do expect synthesis of ideas and evidence of engagement with the work. For most submodules, we also offer the option of submitting a written reflection or a video reflection. And this is a way to really encourage the integration of different media into the learning experience. Rubrics and minimum word counts and video links are defined for each assessment. The competencies for Tier 1 include the following. Interpersonal skills, team building, communication, conflict resolution, problem solving, professionalism, career development, interview skills, critical thinking, customer service, practical knowledge acquisition and application, time management, self-reflection, personal accountability, multicultural competency, and ethics. So how then are students going to actually gain these competencies in Tier 1? Tier 1 includes a series of eight sub-modules that are complete learning units with unique topics, learning outcomes, content, and reflection and assessment. Just a note about the organization of materials within each submodule. 
we decided to maintain a standard format in which we open each submodule with a pre-question, asking students to share their current understanding of the topic. Then there's a document that outlines the submodule's learning outcomes, overview of content, and reflection questions. Next comes a glossary of key terms, as this tier is really focused on introductory understanding, which often includes the language that we use. Next is the content, a mix of articles, videos, presentations, blogs, and a wide variety of different media. Finally comes the reflection and assessment. Anyway, the submodules in tier one include fundamentals of group participation, which introduces students to Tuckman's theory of group development and different challenges and strategies when working in a group. Next up is professional standards and workplace expectations, which covers things like professionalism, interview skills, and business etiquette. Then we have EMCC resources and referral basics. Our students who are working in support roles, such as peer mentors or peer navigators, they're often serving as more of a referral resource than anything else. So our students need to know how to direct other students where they need to go. Um, thus, practical understanding of the institution is really critical. Then we have wellness and self-care, which covers content such as achieving balance in the different dimensions of wellness, how to practice routine self-care, and how to frequently check in with your own mental health. Our next submodule is Introduction to Diversity and Multicultural Competency. Here we introduce concepts such as microaggressions and implicit bias, as well as the importance and positive impact of learning about different identities and celebrating diversity. The Introduction to Ethical Leadership submodule provides students with examples of what ethical leadership means, what it looks like in practice, and why being an ethical leader is so important. Our next to last submodule is active listening and communication skills and includes strategies on how to be an active listener and a positive and effective communicator, as well as boundary setting and relationship building. Finally, the team felt it important to include a submodule that covers FERPA, Title IX, and confidentiality, because we want to ensure that our student leaders understand the laws that they must abide by when privy to protected student information. This submodule includes our EMCC student employee confidentiality contract, information about FERPA and Title IX, and it reinforces the importance of privacy across all functions and roles of the institution. Now that you've learned a little bit about the Tier 1 training, how exactly can students access it? As a staff, faculty, or supervisor at EMCC, you can simply email Nick Runko or myself, um, and I believe Liz Russell has also offered to assist with this, a list of students that you'd like to enroll and the date by which you'd like them to have the training complete, and we'll take it from there. Students may also opt to participate in the first tier without a staff, faculty, or supervisor affiliation. The process is the same. They can just email us directly to be enrolled, and I will work with the student to set a completion date. Once students complete the submodule successfully, I will be issuing the badges directly and will notify the associated staff that the training has been completed. Now, I'd like to take a moment to address a few questions that have come up along the way. First is, can I use this training as a part of the courses I teach? Yes, absolutely. This training could serve as an extra credit or other assignment built into your course. Just contact me for more information or to discuss details. How long will it take for students to complete all the submodules in Tier 1? So the exact time obviously will depend on the student. However, a good estimate would be approximately one hour for each submodule, with a max total of eight hours to complete the Tier 1 training. I supervise work-study students. Can Tier 1 be used as a training or onboarding activity? Yes, absolutely. Tier 1 is designed as a broad introduction to leadership topics with a heavy emphasis on career development and workplace readiness. We encourage supervisors to integrate Tier 1 into their training repertoire as a supplement to existing training and live or in-person learning activities. I'd like to take a few moments to go over what's coming up in Tiers 2 and 3, which are currently still in development. 
Students will have the opportunity to build on their leadership skills through reflection and practice. Tier two is meant as a continuation of learning introduced in tier one and provides more in-depth content on the following topics, leadership development theory, cultural competency, advanced group processing, helping skills in mental health and wellness, crisis response intervention and mediation, advanced leadership ethics, and introduction to community service and civic engagement. From there, it becomes more of a choose your own adventure type of experience. Tier two will house cohort specific tracks where different student leadership groups on campus will house their unique training materials. The biggest advantage to this is that it will allow for students who complete their cohort specific training to walk away with a tangible credential. And it helps to provide a structure and a virtual workspace for supervisors or club advisors to build and evaluate their own training. Groups that are currently planning to use the EMCC Student Leadership Initiative for their training purposes include the TRIO Peer Mentors, Peer Navigators, Student Ambassadors, Peer Tutors, Phi Theta Kappa, and Residential Assistants. Tier three is really what students are working up to throughout the first two tiers. In tier three, students will organize and collaborate with EMCC's community partners to work toward a common goal implementing and putting to action the leadership skills developed throughout the program in the form of a service learning or civic engagement project. So what exactly is the overall benefit to students and the future of this initiative? Students who earn the leadership micro credential and even those who opt to pursue badging opportunities within the program will walk away from the experience with a tangible credential that confirms their leadership competency, increasing their competitiveness and marketability in the workforce. Ultimately, the professionals who've collaborated to design and support the EMCC Student Leadership Initiative share a longer term goal of developing the micro credential into a full free credit course or incorporating the training into existing leadership development courses. For more information, please don't hesitate to contact me, Tasha Lima at alima at emcc.edu. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to working with you.